So in this episode about the Wake Forest School of Medicine with Ryan, who's a third year medical student, there's a couple things that we missed that Ryan mentioned he would like to have me throw on the show. So first of all, all tests basically in the first two years are on Fridays, uh, which is super nice. These tests are pass fail. And th- if you don't pass the first one, there's a test that you can take that's all of the recycled MBME questions. And there's a lower threshold for that. So it kind of gives you a second chance to pass the test. So if you don't pass the first one, you can pass the second one. And if the first one you pass, then you don't have to worry about the second one. You do take it, but you don't have to worry about passing it. Um, it's just good practice. The other thing, so that's nice to know that there's weekends are off. The other thing that he mentioned was that these tests are all system-based. So you'll study a whole unit of say neuro, and then you'll take your neuro test at the end of the block. So um, the, the other thing that he mentioned is that they do provide a few resources for free. Uh, I missed a couple of them, but I know they provide Sketchy for free, USMLERX, and I believe Pathoma. You can look into that, but that's just a nice perk that they throw in with their tuition. So Wake Forest is a great school. Ryan's going to touch on that now. All right. Welcome to the Med School Index podcast. Grateful for Ryan being here, one of my friends from school, from undergrad. He's at Wake Forest School of Medicine in Winston, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Um, thanks so much, Ryan. Did I get that all right? Yep, you did. Okay, great. Well, tell us about Winston Salem. I know that the area is it's like a fairly large city, but it's still like a small town feel. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, Winston Salem is is unique because you have the city, the downtown part of the city. Um, there's a lot going on, but it's very small compared to most cities that we think about. So there's not a lot of traffic here. Um, then you get a little bit further out and you have more of like a suburban type of community, um, where the medical school and the hospital are and, um, and, and it has everything you would want. Um, very convenient. There's lots of stores, lots of um, restaurants, but, um, but you don't have to deal with all the traffic and, and hustle and bustle of like a big city like LA or, or Chicago. Yeah. So, and I imagine it's like super safe because it's more of like a mid-sized town and is the cost of living lower mm-hmm. as well? Yeah. So the cost of living, it's super affordable here. I think most students are, um, are just fine. Most have a car. Um, gas prices are lower here than everywhere else in the nation right now. So that's nice. That's super nice. And then like rent, I think most people are, um, it's like, it depends on where you live in the area, but, but people will normally pay between like 700 and $1,300 a month for rent. Um, not bad at all. And they have quite a few square footage. So, um, so that's super nice. Very nice. And random question, but how far are you away from the beach in North Carolina? three hours. Okay. That's not bad. There's so many cool things around there. I mean, you've got like UNC, um, not too far away and Charlotte and Raleigh. And I don't know, I I've never been to North Carolina, but it sounds like there's a lot of cool things that you can explore around there. Yeah. So we have beaches up and down the coast. The The nearest one is about two and a half hours, um, to three hours away but there's, there's lots of options for beach. The Outer Banks are about five hours away from us. Um, okay. Myrtle Beach is about in South Carolina is about five hours away from us. Charleston's about five hours away from us, but then you have like the mountains nearby too. So in any which direction, I think that's about two hours away. If you, if you want to go a little bit further okay. uh, north or, or west, you can find the mountains. And, um, and then we have Asheville, which is a, a gem in North Carolina. And a lot of people have heard of Asheville. Some people don't know about it, but um, the Vanderbilts um, had, a, had a property there. So the Biltmores, and they really built up that area. It's a really pretty part of the country. Um, and there's a, a parkway where you can just ride for, for miles and just see the, the mountains and the, the green trees. So lots of waterfalls. Um, That's so beautiful. And lots of hiking. Yeah the mountains and the beach. That's like the ultimate place to live. And are you guys just a couple hours from Nashville as well? Um, we are a couple hours from Nashville. I think that's about five hours too. Okay. 
You have you have you guys made it out there yet? Um, we have not. We passed through Nashville on our way here, but we have not gone to visit. Okay, right on. So before we jump into the didactic years, like anything that you love about living there, like that you know that I haven't mentioned. I love the landscape. It's it's great weather most of the year round. Never too cold. It does get hot in the summer, but it's really just because it's humid. And um, no, I think you really hit it. If you like running, there's lots of running trails. If you like rock climbing, there's places to go rock climbing 30 minutes away. So um, really just a, a great place to live, especially if you have a family and you want somewhere a little bit quieter. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't imagine, like traffic, it's good. Yeah, for sure. And I imagine it's like a college town feel. So like the community really rallies around Wake Forest, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Yep. We have actually a couple undergrads here. So we have Wake Forest and then there's also Winston-Salem um, State University as well. So um, really lots of undergraduates here, lots of graduate programs, lots of students. You can make friends in, in different programs too. So that's cool. We have friends in various programs right now training for different things. Super cool. And I was looking online and they, so one thing that you might need to clear up is like the Greensboro area and the Winston Salem area are like all kind of combined in the same metropolitan area. But I know Greensboro is like a little bit further out. Can you explain that? Yeah. So Winston Salem is about 30 minutes from Greensboro and there's an airport in Greensboro too. So that's, that's convenient. You don't have to drive to Raleigh or Charlotte every time you want to fly out. Um, usually you'll have a connection if you're not going to a major airport. Um, and Greensboro has a lot more, it's a little bit bigger than Winston-Salem. So if you're looking for a new restaurant or you want to go out and find something that Winston-Salem doesn't have, they'll probably have it in Greensboro. But um, it's really just a continuation of, of this area and um, about 30 minutes to get from, from Winston-Salem to Greensboro. Okay, super nice. So 30 minutes to the airport, 30 minutes to get to basically probably anything you need. It's a larger city area. Yep. Yep. But I mean, we really don't need to leave Winston-Salem for much. So Winston-Salem has a lot too. Yeah, I imagine it's like over 200,000 people. So Um, very cool. Well, let's jump into the the actual school. So um, your first year at at Wake Forest, what was kind of a typical week looking like for you? Yeah, so if you come to Wake Forest, the first month, you start in July, is an orientation, they call it launch. And very relaxed introduction into everything that's going to happen. Um, and those were not full days, not full of studying, but you kind of eased your way into, into the curriculum, which was nice. And I started during COVID, so it was a little bit different. And there was, little, there was fewer activities and social activities at the time. But I know that mm-hmm. for a typical year, there are a lot of social events that go on during that first month, and that's fun. Uh-huh. And then after that, you start anatomy. And, and I loved anatomy here. We had a, we have a brand new medical school. And so it's, I think it was built in 2016 um, out of a, an old tobacco factory because here Winston-Salem is built on the, um, the legacy of the Reynolds family and they were producers of tobacco. And so um, they took one of the old factories and turned it into a medical school. So you can see the, you can see all of the, the character in our school. And I think it's a really pretty campus, but they have a really nice anatomy lab. That was the point. And um, we would all get to do the dissections ourselves, which I really liked. We had plenty of, um, of doctors and physicians and then other PhD um, people helping us out while we were in there. And you had a group of six people, six other medical students, but you'd only ever be three at a time working on the cadaver. And then the other three would rotate into ultrasound and we have a really nice ultrasound lab. And so we would do that. Or if we weren't in the ultrasound lab, we would do radiology. And so we would get to really learn the anatomy really well from all different types of imaging modalities in addition to the cadaver. And then we get to do that ourselves. And that, that lasted about three months. Um, and, and for anatomy, I think the studying was a little bit different and my week looked a little different. So that's why I'm separating it from the rest of the curriculum, but we would be in the anatomy lab every other day. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, we would be in the classroom and 
we, we would just learn the stuff we needed to know for the anatomy lab the next day. And so when we were in the cadaver lab for, for the mornings, it was really nice to get the whole afternoon to study. And then we'd ever ha only have like three or four hours of lecture. So you always had afternoons off with anatomy. You'd usually have two days to go through the material because you'd have one day of lectures, then you'd have one day of anatomy. Um, so it was really a good way to start medical school, get a really good foundation, have more time to figure out your study strategies and approaches because things really pick up and go fast after that. And that's all the first semester. And that's all, that's until about, I think our, you finish around Halloween. And then after Halloween, you, you go into, we call it MAD here. So it's like metabolism and defense. So you do all your biology, virology, everything micro and biochemistry related. Um, so that way you have that foundation before you start your systems. And that's another three months. You start um, in November and then you do, um, I think that goes up until about the beginning of February um, mm -hmm. of the following year. And you'd get a couple breaks in there for Thanksgiving and Christmas as well. But, but from there forward, the structure is pretty similar. Every day, new material. You're not really getting a second opportunity to look at the same material. And so keeping up on the material is super important. But most days, you're scheduled a half a day. And we got to do stuff virtually. Um, lots of really cool technology in the classroom. So, um, so you can participate virtually. There's cameras all around the classroom. There's speaker, there's like microphones on each of the, the desks. And so if anyone's participating in person, they can ask their question. The people who are watching virtually can listen to the question um, and participate as well. And then, um, and then I think, um, and maybe I'm deviating from your question, but, but you would have lectures every day for about four hours. And, um, and then the rest of the afternoon, I would personally spend it studying and most students would spend most of the rest of their day studying as well. Mm -hmm. And so were these, that was super helpful. So much good information brings a lot of questions to mind. So, um, first of all, are these lectures recorded? The ones that aren't in anatomy lab? Yeah. So even during anatomy, all of the lectures are recorded and then everything inside the lab is not lecture based. And so like that Monday or the Tuesday and Thursday, when you have lectures, you, you have lectures, those are recorded. You can go back and watch them. You can watch them live time. You can also watch the recordings and I don't worry about the live time uh -huh. lectures and that so goes like through not, the whole curriculum. It's not mandatory to yeah. attend the lectures virtually or, or in person. Very no, cool. There's a few, there's a few things that are mandatory in the afternoons. And, and I didn't mention this, but even in anatomy, you have like an ethics class, you have a clinical skills based class where you go to the hospital and learn to interact with patients and learn like physical exam maneuvers. And then you have, um, a couple of the random things that happen in the afternoons and those are all mandatory in person. Okay. But very, usually very, about very one cool. of those a week. So I, I actually noticed online that there is like the ultrasound course that you guys go through. And I think that's super unique to Wake Forest. There's P there's schools that are adding that, but not a lot have, I mean, they have definitely ultrasound training, but, um, like a dedicated course within anatomy to, uh, radiology and ultrasound. That's, that's super unique. Um, what did that look like? Like, so, you know, you said you had three people on a cadaver, three people doing that. Like how much ultrasound experience were you getting and whatnot? Yeah. So when we went in to do the ultrasound, we'd usually do about an hour of ultrasound and we would go through one structure at a time and learn mm -hmm. the different um, techniques with the ultrasound, how to work the machine, but also you would get to learn the anatomy and you had practice on each other. So we were practicing on real people. There's an ultrasound certificate as well that you can sign up for and, and get even more exposure if you want than what the curriculum already offers. But there's this big ultrasound lab. There's about 10 machines in there. And so, I mean, there was three of us in any one group at a time. And we would have ultrasounds quite frequently during anatomy. But following anatomy, you still get to do ultrasound throughout the whole preclinical um, and didactic curriculum. So we wouldn't have it quite as frequently as an anatomy, but we would continue to, to go to the lab when we were on 
our different systems and then learn more detailed anatomy and ultrasound for that specific system. So the kidneys when we're on renal, the brain when we're on neuro. Super cool. Very cool way of learning it. So, um, and then with that, are these like didactic years, are these graded pass fail or is there a class rank or are there grades assigned? Yeah, everything's pass fail. No, no internal rankings for the preclinical years. No. Um, yeah, there, there shouldn't be any pressure about your, your ranking during the preclinical years. At least that's what they've conveyed to us and, and everything is pass fail, but you do get the specific score. So when you take an exam, you do get to see how you scored and you do get the class average. And so you can, you can gauge where you are within your class and how you're performing compared to your classmates. But, um, we don't really differentiate with grades until third year. And in third year, we have a, a pass fail system again, but it's a, a tiered pass fail. So it's honors, high pass, pass, low pass. Okay. Very cool. And, uh, we'll jump. I'm trying to think if there's, there was something else I wanted to ask about, uh, I didactic years, but I just want to jump into the clinical years because it's really interesting. So there, there's a few schools that we've talked to that are doing this where they have kind of shortened from the typical two-year didactic and two-year clinical to a one-year or an 18-month uh, didactic year. And so Wake Forest has adopted an 18-month didactic year. So can you run us through um, just on the didactic year, like so it started in July and then you said you had like, you know, probably Thanksgiving and Christmas break. And then did you guys have a summer between like your first and second year or does it go straight through? That's a really good question. So you get most of the week during Thanksgiving and then the, you have like Monday two scheduled lectures, but none of those are required, nothing in the afternoon. So I spent the, that whole week in Cancun so in my nice. lectures virtually. Um, and so you really get a week off. Mm -hmm. And then you get two weeks for Christmas and then you get the whole summer. So summer for us, or you also get a spring break. So you get a week of spring break. Mm -hmm. um, and I think towards the end of March and then summer starts beginning of May and you have two months of summer or two and a half months of summer. And, um, and then after that you resume um, your second year, but because we're a consolidated 18 month program, like you said, we finish, um, well, we start our systems in February. And so we start with neurology, have three months of neurology. And then we also do a month of um, gastrointestinal um, systems. And then we, we have the summer. After that, we come back and we finish off Hemont, renal, and, uh, and cardiology before we I, I probably missed one. I think there's another one, but oh, pulmonology. And so those are the, the rest of the systems. And we will finish up all of that by, by mid-December. And then Maybe. after, what was that? Oh, I was just going to say, go ahead. But it sounds like that's probably when you start studying for step or. Yeah. So a lot of people will start studying for step at that time. My class was the first class to take step pass fell or have that option mm -hmm. because that changed in January. Um, and so that was right during our dedicated period, but, but our curriculum ended mid December. And then we had until March until we started our third year, the mm -hmm. beginning of March. And so during that time, most people would, would spend about eight weeks studying for step one, take step one. And then they would have about a month just off just to do whatever they wanted, whether that was research, whether that's a vacation, taking a break. And then the school required that you take step one by February 10th because it takes a couple of weeks to get your score back and that's required to start third year. So we, um, so you really have quite, a, quite a, a large period of time dedicated to step one preparation, but then you have the autonomy within that that time period to decide if you want to take it sooner or later and whatever meets your needs or your, your desires. So that is so nice. I love how that's broken up. Like you get a summer and Christmas and Thanksgiving and the, you know, uh, spring break, like, like a lot of schools have that, but then it's so nice to have kind of a break in the middle of the year. Um, not only to study for step, but it sounds like you get at least a month 
um, before clinical. That's just super nice. So um, with that, this is kind of not related to the school, but like pass fail step, I'm sure a lot of people are interested. Like, did you feel like you had to study for the full two months or did you take it? When did you take it? So I took it towards the end of January. So that's about eight weeks after. Um, it was actually 10 weeks after I started um, after that, that first block, but the first two weeks of the break, I took off for Christmas and then I started studying um, dedicated and, and then I had eight weeks. So I took it about eight weeks out. And I thought that that was a sufficient amount of time to really master the material because this is a time to consolidate, really learn everything you need to well before clinicals start. Mm -hmm. Because even now in clinicals, I realize that that information is super important. And if you don't learn uh -huh. it well, it's going to hurt your, your performance during third year when you are being graded and those grades do matter. Um, and I'm also aware of, of another study, or there's several studies that show that your score on step one is strongly correlated with your score on step two. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't build a really strong foundation for step one, despite it being pass fell and just, you know, pass is fine, but then you get to step two, then you may not be as, as happy with your step two score. So, um, I studied as though it were not pass fell. Um, I passed it fine. And, and it wasn't as stressful as it has been in years past for other students, but, um, yeah, that's, super but I think nice. it's important to take it serious and to start yeah. early. I think that's smart to study for it. Like it wasn't pass failed, you know, it's shooting for the moon and, and whatnot. So that's awesome. So let's talk about the, that was so well detailed. Like that was probably the, the best detail we've ever had <laughs> on the podcast. So the the clinical years. So to give some context, Ryan is uh, currently in his third year, uh, started his rotations, what, three months ago, Ryan? Yeah. Okay. And so do you want to tell us about like what rotations you've done and then how are those kind of like similarly of, of what you've described so far? Like how is that scheduled out and, and what the breaks and when you take your shelf exams, all that? Yeah. So Our school, I'm not sure how other schools do this. So it may be similar, maybe different than what you've already heard on the podcast, but we have three trimesters for our third year clinicals mm -hmm. and they're called hops, pops, and um, ops. And so I'm in the hospital part of my tri or of my third year. And so I put in, pre you can put in your preferences for what order you you want your, your third year, but then you have to take that whole, that whole chunk together. And so I can't order each of my individual rotations, but I could say, I would like to do my hospital based rotations in whatever order or my populations based or my operations based, um, clinical rotations. And that's a little bit confusing, but what I mean by that is I'm in my, my first trimester of third year and, and I'm doing internal medicine, psychiatry, and neurology. Um, and I'm currently in neurology, I already finished the other two um, and wanted to start with that. So I had a, a strong foundation in internal medicine and just medicine in general. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then the populations trimester, that one's going to be your emergency medicine, your family medicine and your pediatrics rotations. And then for your operations trimester, you're going to have surgery and OB-GYN and anesthesia. And so I know that most, most schools don't require neurology, anesthesia, um, or, um, no, I think that's, that's it, but, but our curriculum in, incorporates that into the, the third year, which is, is pretty cool. Um, and I think that's because we have an 18 month preclinical. So it allowed them a little bit more time to add some stuff into our third year, but also give us more elective time during fourth year. I love the anesthesia addition to the, the third year. Do you guys have like a fourth year, um, required emergency medicine rotation or is that optional? Oh, sorry. That's actually part of our third year. Yeah. So oh, when is. you do okay. sorry, I missed pediatrics, that. um, family med, and you also have emergency medicine for, for a month. Okay. Very cool. Wow. That is so, um, what's the word there's, there's a wide variety of what you're going to see there compared to other schools. So that's fantastic. And then, so do you get like a, any breaks during that time or how is the schedule lined up? So third year has fewer breaks than the first two years. Mm -hmm. 
And we, so once you take step one, um, by the 10th, you, about a week after that, you start your orientation for third year. Mm -hmm. That's a really light, relaxed schedule. And then you start like first week, March, you get all of the major holidays off. Um, and then you also get one week during the summer. So the week of the 4th of July, you get off. Mm, nice. And then in between every trimester, there's another one week long orientation. So you might have like an hour or two of orientation, but they're pretty light days. Um, and then you get Christmas and Thanksgiving again, but there's not really a, a large summer break. Like there was between years one and two, um, just a week. No, oh, that's nice though. Um, probably more than some schools give. So, and then you, I'm assuming you get like a little bit of time for Thanksgiving and um, the time around Christmas. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So cool. same thing. You get the the three days at the end of the week for Thanksgiving and then you get um, two weeks for Christmas. Okay. Very nice. And then when do you finish third year and enter fourth year? So we finish at the end of February and start fourth year, the second week of March. Okay. Um, and then in between you get a week off. Okay. Nice. So um, our fourth year, most people will start off by taking what we call a flex block um, because we start our fourth year a little bit earlier than other schools. We, we get three flex blocks, which are basically every block during fourth year is a month long. And, and these three can be used for anything. They can be used for research, vacation. You can take it for a study block or how many study blocks you can also, our school is really cool and flexible in that you can take off time during third year if you need it either for for more time to study for step one, or if you have a child, you can take, you know, maternity leave, paternity leave. They're really adaptable here. And so if you want to take that time earlier in your third year, you can, and then you have that time during fourth year when you can make it up, but you have to finish all of your third year requirements before fourth year. But point being, you have, um, you have these, these three flex blocks where you can do whatever you want and adapt the fourth year to how you want while still having all the other electives that most schools offer. And so being able to do your, your active internships, your ways, and that doesn't re require you take any of those flex blocks. So I imagine there's a lot of ways that people do it, but there's probably like a general way that a lot of people do it. And I'm guessing it's like, maybe they take the first uh, trimester of fourth year to study for step two, the second one to do like a ways. And then like third to do more like residency type, like interviews yeah. and things like that, or how does that work? Yeah. So, so third year is broken into trimesters. Fourth year is just broken into month long blocks and you can really do it in whatever order. It's kind of a lottery first come first serve um, because they can't have everyone do the same thing at the same time. Uh -huh. But in general, most people will finish their third year, take a month for setting for step two, and then they'll start to do their, their, in, their action internships, their away rotations all before maybe a research block before they apply for residency. And then they use another flex block, usually around the time of, of the interviews or the anticipated interviews for the specialty of choice that they applied to. And then they'll use their last one at the very end of fourth year. So you can just be done and just cruise into graduation. So you'll still graduate with your class, but you have no commitment. Um, and that's how most people will use their, their last flex block. Oh, that's cool. What do they do? Like, do they just maybe, I mean, probably all sorts of stuff, but like, yeah, really they're, they're done with their school and they've met all the requirements so they can do whatever they want. Um, okay. others will take that and, and use it earlier for, for whatever, if they need something to strengthen their application, they might use, use it for research or something else, but. Okay. Interesting. And is that, that isn't the same flex block that you mentioned earlier. That's like that you can kind of postpone that part of third year, or is that the same one? That's the same thing. So th there's a, there's three flex blocks total. They are technically your fourth year flex blocks, but uh -huh. if for whatever reason you needed to take some time during third year, then they would just use one of your flex blocks to make up third year requirements during fourth year. Okay. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Wow. That is so well detailed and uh, great to know. So the last month of, I mean, if, say you're using that last flex block and actually doing stuff, when would you finish? Like when graduation's in the spring or? Um, graduation's in May. So you'd finish towards the end of March. 
okay. end of April. Okay. Very cool. So I feel like you've taken us from like day one to the last day, which is super helpful for everyone to see. And we've seen a lot of like unique things about Wake Forest. Um, I think a lot of schools have like extracurricular and research opportunities that are pretty similar across the board. Um, but kind of any other details that make Wake Forest unique that incoming students you'd want to tell them about, um, whether that's like things you love about the area or just the extracurricular research opportunities or the clinical opportunities, like what, what have you loved and what makes Wake Forest unique? One of the things I, I love about Wake Forest is the ability during second year to, to do whatever you want. Like we have a program here called um, Medical Student Research Program, so the MSRP, and you can get paid to do research in your summer. So I made 4,000 bucks um, in two months just to do the research that I needed to do anyways for, um, for residency. And so I, I really liked that, but you really can, can use that time for whatever you want. And I think that's a, a really important aspect of our curriculum is very early, you have that opportunity to explore your interests and to have tangible experiences that you can, you know, add to your CV and then use in residency applications and to really build those networks early so that you can continue even during the curriculum to, to keep up on, on those opportunities, whether that's volunteering or research or whatever it is. Um, there's a really cool program as well here called DEEK and it's, it stands for Delivering Equal Access of Care. And it's a student ran clinic in the medical school. There's a whole floor that we use and it, they, they offer this free clinic to the people in our community who may not have help coverage and, and need some extra help. And, and you get a lot of autonomy as medical students to do that. It's, it's completely medical student ran. There's usually a physician there for oversight. There is a physician there for oversight. And then you have um, a mobile clinic, which is similar to that, except this clinic will go to the community and you have like this, this RV that has been, um, created for that specific purpose. You have like an exam table that goes out flat, like the whole, the whole van turns into this clinical room and so you can cool. take that out to the community. So those are some things that I've done that I've really enjoyed about Wake Forest. And, um, and, and I've really appreciated that. I know that, um, as third year students, fourth year students, you, and even as preclinicals, you have lots of coaching here. I use the coaching. Some people um, prefer not to use it, but I think that's a really nice resource here as well that I, I really enjoyed is, is having one-on-one -on -one time with successful physicians mm -hmm. who, who want you to be able to, to succeed and, and they're there to help you do just that. So, um, so that's really nice too, is to have someone built into the, the system where you know where to turn when you don't know where to turn because especially on day one, you, you don't know anybody. And so those are really good places to start and then they can connect you with the right people. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that seems, it seems like a very supportive community, um, strong mentorship and, and you're not in like a big city, so you might not feel as lost there. So, um, well, Ryan, you've been exceptional in answering in all these questions. Is there anything else that you would add? Um, Not necessarily. Um, just be engaged, be yourself. I know it's stressful sometimes when you start off and uh, especially when you're interviewing for medical schools as well. Um, I think something really cool about Wake Forest too that I didn't mention is that most of the students here have like non-traditional backgrounds. A lot of people mm -hmm. worked before they came here. They had a different profession. They switched. They, they're, they're coming from a whole array of different experiences and that offers a lot to the curriculum. And, um, and so be yourself, don't, don't try to fit a mold and, and you'll really succeed and, and people will like that. Um, that's and, great advice to applying applicants. Yeah. And, and good luck. Awesome. Ryan, thanks so much. You, you've been so great on the podcast and for as long as I've known you. So take care, man. Hey, thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye.